So here I'm going to cover the basics of printing and saving. I have got a drawing here of some sort of component and I have broken it up into three layers. There's my layers up here, the zero layer, the default layer, which is the main part. So if I turn, turn it on and off, you can see what it is. The whole layer, which we say is some sort of optional extra and the dimensions. This is drawn in model space, full size, obviously. I've drawn a rectangle around the outside just to help you visualize what's going to happen when we scale the thing. The rectangle around the outside is A4 size. So it's uh, 297 by 210 millimeters. Now, when I want to print, I go down the bottom here where it says paper one. Sometimes it's called layout, sometimes it's called sheets. We call it paper. Click on the paper. Here's my paper. So the white bit is my paper. The dotted line is my drawing size. So I need to relate the size of my drawing to the size of the paper I'm going to print on. So file, page setup, printer paper. Our printer paper is A4. I want it in landscape and the drawing sheet size is A4. Now, if you only had an A4 printer, but you wanted to print in A3 or something like that, you'd have to print, you'd have to tile it. You'd have to print several sheets of A4 and stick them together. Here, we're just gonna print A4. We've got some other bits and pieces down here. We've got full size, yes, of course. It always, that must always say full size, whatever. Fit, I don't touch that. It just fits in a paper. I can do that by eye. There's some things here. Printing margins if you're sending it for a publication. Print grid. If you're dealing with an A4 printer, it's not it's not going to be a good standard. Uh, that's about it. Or print construction. I don't actually use construction lines myself. I use something else. So, okay. Now, my printed paper size and my drawing sheet size are the same. Sandy. Now I'm going to go back to my model space. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some snapshots of this which I'm then going to plonk on my paper. So the snapshots are called views. I'm going to go to view, view, named views, create view. Right, I'm going to create view. So I get this dotted line of rectangle. I left click and take it over the whole thing and then I left click again and a box comes up asking me to give it a name. Actually, I've already got some in this. One was called all, so I'm going to call this one all. I'm going to say OK. And it's going to say overwrite existing one. Yep. And then I'm going to go view, named views, create view. Perhaps this time I'm going to do, uh, what should I do? I do. Um, What about if I call that the outside? Okay. And I'll create one more named views, create view, and this is perhaps for that might be a detail that I need. So I'm going to call that detail. Call that detail, okay. It says, oh you've already got one called detail. Do you want to override it? Yeah, sure. So I've taken a number of snapshots. Now I'm going to go back to my paper space, which is all nicely set up for the right size for me. And I'm going to bring my snapshots and plonk them on the paper. So I'm going to go, um, now it depends what version you've got, but in 2015, which I presume you've got, it's under viewports. In some older versions, it'll be under insert. But here we've got view, viewports viewport. So I've got this dotted box on the end of my cursor. I'm going to go, let's make it there. Which one do I want there? I want the one called all. Go to. View, viewports, viewport. Which one do I want here? Should we call it? We'll have the one called outside here. 
and view, we do one more, viewport, uh, detail, go to, okay. Now, let's look at each box. Let's look at this box. Now we know that that size there in our model space was A4, and we know this is an A4. So let's select that box, right click, go to its properties, viewport. Here we go. Here's its name, all. It's got all layers, it's got the zero, the hide, and the dims. And I can turn these off if I want to. So say for example, I didn't want to, to show the dims, and I didn't want to show the hole in this one either. I'll turn those off, so I've just got the main part. Down the bottom here, the background is transparent. I could if I want to give it a bit of a sort of coloring on that one, just to make it stand out. And the scale is fixed. So if I click onto that, we can see I've brought it in and it's coming about one to two. Now considering that would fit on this A4 sheet of paper, that looks you can see that looks about right. If I want to change it, so I want to change it to one to five just so that we can see the difference. I'll go one to five. And here visible box, I can have the outside of the box if I want to or not. Okay. There we go, it's changed it. Now what about if I wanted to get rid of this box on the outside? I'd forgotten about that. So I'm going to go to Model. I'm going to create a new layer. And I called it Outside Line. OK. And I'm going to click that on my Outside Line. There you go. And now when I go back to Print Paper, and I select that, it's gone. Right, because it was on an invisible layer. Here I've got my dimensions now and here I've got a detail. Now this one here, because I've scaled it, you see I can make the box bigger or smaller, but it won't change that because it's a scale. Whereas these I haven't given it a scale so I could make them bigger or smaller. Do that sort of thing. If I had a, uh, I wanted perhaps a frame round here, you know I've got all my usual tools to use. I can put notes on here. If I bring in a, a picture, if I go insert a picture from file, uh, let's pick up one of my paintings. What should we have? Let's pick up this one. If I insert a picture here, now when I save this drawing, this um, picture is saved in my computer. So now, at this moment in time, this thing here is looking at a file with inside my computer. If I save this and send this drawing off as an attachment, the attachment won't, when the other person opens it, they won't be able to see this picture because it's not in their, uh, in their computer. So if you do bring in any sort of picture, you've got to go up to insert picture, and here it says from image list. Click on to image from the image list. There it is. It's called All You Need Is Love. And you embed it and apply. Now, when you send that uh, drawing office and attachment to someone, the other end, they'll be able to, when they open your drawing, they'll be able to see that. Now, these viewports, these boxes, are looking back at the model space. So if I change anything, so let's just make a real big silly change. If I draw a rectangle there, select it up here, make it black, go to paper space and there it is, it's updated it because these boxes are looking back at that model space. 
and if I change it in the model space it will be updated in the paper space okay now I've just got one sheet of paper here but where it says paper one if you right click you can duplicate so you can have as many as you like you can insert and you can rename so if you rename just ask it for a name so um, just call it one okay now that down the bottom is called one so, and you can have as many paper spaces as you like so let's go back to model so that's done we've got our paper spaces we've printed and whatever and now I want to save it file save as obviously across the top here it says desktop so we have to choose where we want to save it here and then in what type of file format we want to save so it's going to default to TCW which is TurboCAD native file default if I click on to here in the deluxe I think we have 22 in the professional something like 32 file formats so if we go down here we've got the TCW so we've got TurboCAD and it'll save in the latest one or, or, or the one before uh, version 21 20 19 so we've got those few back if you've got older versions you want to save it back to and use an older version we've got 3ds studio which is a 3d drawing package uh, an AutoCAD file format rather um, what we got Collada which is a sort of mongrel 3d uh, file format coming down we've got DWG and DXF DXF tends to be read by machinery if you're swapping it between people using other packages I've always found DWG the most reliable the other thing is if you choose DWG now you're using perhaps the latest TurboCAD here if you save it now it'll save in the latest one but if you go to setup you see here like you can save as the latest 2012 9, 6, 2014, uh, release 14. So if someone, if a colleague of yours has got a 10 year old CAD package and you save it automatically, your drawing and send it to them, the chance are they won't be able to read it because it's 10 years old. But you can save it as an older one here so they can. There's also lots of variations on how you can save it, but you can look at those in your leisure. So we've got DXF. Then we got some ones for pictures, JPEGs. We can save as a PDF. So if you're sending your drawing to someone who has not got a CAD system at all, but as long as they've got Acrobat, they can open a PDF. Uh, SKP is a SketchUp file format. STL is the format that 3D printers read. So you just choose whichever one it is, say it's DWG, if it's DWG you probably want to set up which one it is, maybe it's the latest one, and you go OK, and then you simply say, you give it a name, and then you simply say save, and then you save it wherever you, wherever you want it saved. Alright, that's, uh, I think that's the, uh, uh, that's about it really.